Tetris is the king of puzzle-based video games, a perfectly contoured, block-building bonanza, which has been refined a little bit over the years, but remains ever true to its core. The addictive, high-score-chasing gameplay quickly bred competition during the late 1980s, and since then the evolution of human ability has soared to heights beyond belief. However, unlike other skill-based game competitions such as chess for example, Tetris as a competitive concept has to deal with the restrictions of copyright and licensing by nature of its format as a video game. The Tetris company has a history of litigious behavior, to the point that we actually have a pretty clear understanding about which aspects of Tetris are and are not copyright protected. Alexei Pajitnov himself is staunchly anti-open source, and has claimed that free software, quote, destroys the market. Though the fight to push Tetris into the public domain will likely rage onward for a long time, if not forever, copycat versions of this game nevertheless exist out in the vast reaches of the World Wide Web, with similar pieces and board dimensions, but omitting any of the trademark terms such as Tetrominoes. There are even a handful of clones that exist as homebrew games on various retro consoles, and today I'd like to explore some of these in the spirit of making Tetris legally accessible to all of humanity. I'm by no means a Tetris Grandmaster, as I'm sure will be readily apparent when you're watching my recorded gameplay, but I do have a passion for the game as well as open source and freely distributable materials, so I hope that I can do these homebrews justice in this video. Without further ado, let's try some of these out. Dulan is the first Tetromino based puzzle homebrew that we'll be taking a look at today. Deriving its name from the Irish word for challenge, this game certainly lives up to the title, as the player is presented with level-by-level -level Tetris challenges of increasing difficulty. Similar to the format featured in Tengen Tetris on NES, but with its own unique twists and turns for the player to navigate. The first level is a pretty standard line clearing affair, but as soon as you progress you'll start to notice the gameplay transform in new and unexpected ways, with custom pieces, an upside down game board, and even timed bomb diffusing all making an appearance before too long. You get the choice between three different music tracks like many other Tetris versions. I found Theme B to be the catchiest tune, but none of them are particularly bad at least. It's too bad that they don't change the tracks between each level, but I suppose that's another stylistic choice that was lifted from Tangan Tetris. The controls feel even more sluggish than its dated NES counterparts, which is an unfortunate drawback that diminishes my enjoyment for the game a fair bit. I'd recommend using anything but the default mixture drop method, as the controls can sometimes give you a hard drop when you didn't necessarily want one. There are also only 10 levels in the game before it loops back to the title screen with no multiplayer options or any other game modes like the Endless mode for example, so unless you really dig these specific challenges, there unfortunately isn't all that much replay value to be had. Still, for a free homebrew game, I really can't fault Dulan all that much. It's a perfectly enjoyable game as it is, and I appreciate some of the ideas that developer Peter McQuillan employed in this project. If you want a physical copy of the game, or want to support the creator in any way that you can, you can get an NES cartridge of the game from the Mega Cat Studios website for $24.99, which comes with a professional looking box and manual. LJ65 is another unofficial Tetris option on the NES, with a number of features that distinguish it from the previous entry in this video. This simple but versatile deployment of Tetris on 8-bit hardware has quickly become one of my favorite versions to play, thanks to smooth controls and modern quality of life features that make it enjoyable. This game has existed in some form as early as 2002, and was previously known as Tetramino, 
but this 0.41 version appears to be the final release, and it just turned 10 years old recently. Where Dulan is more focused on scenario-based rounds, LJ65 is all about variations on the endless mode, where you can tweak the speed and rotation method as well as have support for two players with or without garbage tiles. The default music is not very appealing in my opinion, but thankfully the other option called Temp is much more pleasing to the ears, complementing the intensity of the gameplay. The controls feel butter smooth, and the added modern quality of life features like the hard drop and ghost pieces help push LJ65 into being one of the most robust Tetris options on the NES. My biggest gripe with the game has to be the lack of high scores, a feature that really should be a staple in any Tetris game. There's also not much under the surface here, so replay value really comes from your enjoyment of the endless mode, which of course has gobs of enjoyment to be derived. For the low price of free, I'd recommend this homebrew to any Tetris fan. It includes some features that are missing in the more common Tetramino ROM that I've seen floating around in homebrew circles on the internet, so be sure to get this LJ65 0.41 release instead. It should be considered the definitive version of Damien Yerick's NES Tetris clone, and for some players, it could be their definitive Tetris experience on the NES, period. Lockjaw the Overdose is another homebrew by the aforementioned Damien Yerrick, but this time for a totally different system, that being the Game Boy Advance. I actually covered this game ages ago in a GBA homebrew video, but it definitely warrants mention here. Lockjaw originally existed as a PC game, but it was later ported to the GBA as Tetanus on Drugs before changing the name and what would become the final release, that being Milestone 4. Though the name change Saga draws some comparisons to his other project on the NES, Lockjaw actually takes quite a turn for the weird that is not visible in the LJ65 homebrew. The main noteworthy feature of this game is the playfield that rotates and distorts to the beat of the music, which when coupled with the distracting psychedelic background, makes for both an interesting challenge and a ridiculous, sometimes frustrating play experience. Holding down the R button during gameplay sometimes will help because it zooms things out a bit and helps make it a little less frantic, but it's not a perfect solution for anybody who's just looking for a normal Tetris game. You can change the background if you like, but after witnessing some of these juvenile attempts at backgrounds, you might just come to find a new appreciation for that default kaleidoscope. Despite some of these bizarre quirks and the tongue-in-cheek nature of the game, Lockjaw still emerges as the best option for Tetris on the GBA in my opinion by nature of how mediocre the commercial Tetris Worlds is, unless you also count the Japan-only Tetris Advance which I personally have not played. I've heard rumors that there is a version of this homebrew that actually does not have the rotating playfield, so if anybody out there can find this ROM, I would really like to hear about it in the comments. Damien Yerrick has an interesting website that briefly discusses his views on the copyright issues surrounding Tetris. I'll be sure to link this below in the description as I highly recommend you read what he has to say if you find this topic interesting and appreciate the work that he's done for Tetris Homebrew. Tetris Fighter is another GBA homebrew version of Tetris, one that appears to have significantly less information about it online compared to some of these other homebrews that we've discussed so far. I was able to dig up the 2004 GBA X coding competition page, where the game did not place and was listed in the other entries category among what looked to be a pretty crowded field. 
The only ROM available for this game is subtitled Episode 1, implying the existence of an Episode 2, though this has either never materialized or has been lost from the internet. The GBADev.org page for Triss Fighter mentions that there are 70 levels, but it's difficult to tell if this applies only to the first episode or what would have been the full game. Creator Pascal Espanol is a difficult person to track down as well, with seemingly no contemporary web presence related to this homebrew, except for a website shown in the actual game that just links to a page displaying what appears to be the creator's email address. So all we're left with today is this version, which is a decent little scenario-based version of Tetris, in a similar vein to Do Lawn, but yet again with its own special traits to distinguish it from other versions. The goal of the player is to scale this alien pyramid that has apparently invaded Earth, and for some unknowable reason, this is accomplished by completing a series of Tetris challenges of ever-increasing difficulty. As you climb higher and higher, you'll encounter special element-based power-ups that provide different effects during gameplay, such as the water power-up that trickles blocks downward into open spaces beneath it, or the snow power that lets you shoot one by one blocks downward while the piece is still falling. I'm not gonna sit here and try to argue that this is some sort of lost hidden gem, but Triss Fighter is still an adequate version of Tetris that posits some interesting ideas on how to improve the basic gameplay loop. It may not have the snappy controls or visual style that some of these other homebrews may put on display, but I can certainly think of worse ways that one can spend their time. Solaris is another obscure Tetris homebrew that can be difficult to track down, this time on the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive. This homebrew was developed by Nendo, a Japanese homebrew studio that focuses exclusively on the Mega Drive. Any mention of Solaris that I can find online links to their Japanese language website, which does not appear to host this homebrew ROM anywhere, at least that I can find as of the making of this video. Thankfully, a Discord buddy of mine, Jackal27, was able to track down a copy of this ROM from a Sega Bits forum user so it can be properly preserved. Not to be confused with Solaris on NES, which is a homebrew shoot 'em up, this is another simple Tetris clone that can be closely compared with LJ65, though it sadly does not include a two player mode. Sega's 16-bit console notably lacked any suitable Tetris option, despite success with their version of Tetris in the arcades, the only version to be developed for the system going unreleased until its inclusion in the recent Sega Genesis Mini. So that makes Solaris a nice homebrew to have in the collection for any Sega fan. With responsive controls, solid visuals, and much appreciated quality of life additions, this is an impressive version of Tetris that rivals any of the home console versions from a pure gameplay standpoint, as far as I'm concerned at least. Unfortunately, Solaris still feels a bit undercooked in its current state, with no background music and lack of a battery save to retain high scores upon exiting. The title screen states that this is version 0.81 beta, so it's possible that Nendo decided to yank this beta version in favor of a possible full release in the future, though this is complete speculation on my part. If you're like me though, and are just looking for another Tetris flavored distraction that you can pour some time into here and there, it's hard to find a reason to recommend against Solaris, and I'm truly thankful that it was able to be preserved for the world to experience. Yeah. At the risk of this video going on for way too long, I would be remiss to not also bring up Sonic Tetris while discussing unofficial versions of Tetris on retro consoles. 
Sonic Tetris is actually a ROM hack, not a homebrew. But with the way that the Sonic hacking community freely distributes ROM files, along with Sega's receptiveness to emulation and digital versions of their games in general, it's been pushed a little more into that gray area where I think it's worth including as an extra footnote on this list. If you choose to play Sonic Tetris, you'll be greeted with an NES Tetris-style gameplay experience, with some lovely scrolling backgrounds and remixed tunes from one of the most iconic video game soundtracks of all time, that being Sonic the Hedgehog. No hard drop or ghost pieces here like in Solaris, but the presentation more than makes up for these emissions in my opinion, and I can personally respect the desire for a more pure, retro gameplay experience. There's even an extra game mode where you can play through Sonic 1 with the special stages replaced with Tetris challenges, working different parts of your brain in ways that not many video games do. It's difficult not to gawk at the impressive hacking skills on display here. Crash not only radically transformed one game into another, he arguably improved the original game while doing it, and then provided it for us as an extra option. If you've not already played Sonic Tetris and you're a fan of either franchise, just do yourself a favor already and seek it out in any way that you can. You can either acquire the ROM file, or you can find Crash's Steam Workshop mod of it through the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis classics. Hey, thanks for checking out this video about Tetris homebrew games on retro consoles. Hopefully, you found some new games to try out, or at the very least found this video to be entertaining and informative. There are actually several other Tetris homebrew ROMs out there, but many of them are incomplete or not very well made, so I thought I'd just try to chronicle the ones that are ultimately worth people's time. If I happen to miss one that you like, be sure to link it down in the comments and maybe I'll cover it in the future sometime. Also be sure to check out the description as I've included several links for further reading if you want to find out more about the copyright issues surrounding Tetris as well as more context for some of these homebrew games. Thanks again and I'll see you all next time.